Inside EKU Sports. Brought to you by Jimmy John's. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's, freaky fast, freaky fresh. Welcome to Inside EKU Sports, a production of EKU Athletics. It is tournament time for the women's basketball team, and Chrissy Roberts joins us. You had to win on senior day against Tennessee Tech to make the tournament, and you did, and it was in grand fashion. It, it was. I tell you what, our, our, our seniors still want to play a little ball, and um, just proud of the, the overall team effort, everybody that stepped foot on the floor to, to the bench. Um, they played well. Alexis Cooper was on fire. You could see the smile on her face late in the game. She hit eight threes out of the 12 she took, one shy of the school record. 26 points, good time to shoot well. Perfect time to shoot well. Um, I was playing with a lot of confidence, had that refuse to lose mentality. I mean, she looked at me and said, Coach, we're not losing this game. Um, she played that way. I mean, you look at Mariah's assist, 10 assists. Yeah, first double-double. Uh, first double-double, 10 points and, and six rebounds. Almost had a triple-double, um, but, but they played well. You had not shot over 50% in a game outside of Ohio Valley, a non-D1 team, and you go out and just ripped the cords. And it wasn't just three-pointers. I mean, you were inside efficient as well. Yeah, it was, it was, it was balanced. Um, you know, Shavante Naylor hit some big-time shots. And, you know, Jalen uh, finishing in the paint. But um, if we want to continue to play, you know, we got to, of course, defend and rebound, but you got to put the ball in the basket. At the end of the day, the team who, who scores the most points wins. It was uh, crazy. It was like we talked earlier <clears throat> in the year on the show that uh, you like the Rubik's Cube. It was a Rubik's Cube to decide what seed and who's going to be in the OVC Women's Tournament. You end up as, what, the seven seed? Seven seed. Play Moorhead on Wednesday, followed by, if you win, a Friday afternoon game against the winner of SIUE and Tennessee Tech. So. You got a shot. You just got to go down there and take care of business. We do uh, a game at a time. We know it's going to be, um, uh, you know, a, a tough road for us. It, it's tournament time, new season. Uh, everybody wanted to win an OVC championship and go to uh, the NCAA tournament. So, uh, got to play team ball for 40 minutes. You know, back when you were playing and you won an OVC tournament, I believe you beat Moorhead in the semifinals. Was it? I, I think so. I, I See, I remember. <laughs> You, you were on the all-tournament team, but do you remember a teammate was the MVP of that tournament? Who was it? I think it was Lafilia Doss. Lafilia Doss, yeah. yes. Well, good luck. Yes. Let's uh, let's uh, make good memories in Nashville. They were good last year. Got all the way to the finals against Belmont. Hope you can do it again this year, Thank Coach. you. All right, thanks. Chrissy Roberts with us again. The women will play at 4 o'clock Eastern time at Municipal Auditorium in Nashville. That will be against Moorhead State. If they win, they'll do it again on Friday against the winner of SIUE and Tennessee Tech. We have the coverage on WEKY and on EKU Sports. Com. It'll also be on the OVC Digital Network. Now to men's basketball. They swept both Tennessee Tech and Jacksonville State on Thursday and Saturday to get season sweeps over those two teams and ended the season on a high note. And what a great accomplishment for sophomore Nick Mayo. This shot got him to 1,000 points, the 35th member of the 1,000-point club at EKU. But the thing about Nick Mayo is he's the only sophomore in the more than 100-year history of EKU basketball to do that. He had a career-high 31 in the win over Tech, and he now has 1,025 points. And on Senior Day, a salute to Isaac McGlone, the only graduating senior. Isaac will end his EKU career sixth in games played seventh in steals and 10th in three pointers made. That puts a wrap on it for basketball. Up next, baseball here on Inside EKU Sports. In a world where one hungry boss There better be food up there or you're all fired. Could cost an entire office their jobs. Who ordered the food? And time is running out. Someone has to take the fall. Tom orders on Tuesday. Today isn't Tuesday. It's not Tuesday. We're all fired. Fire. Oh. It'll take one intern and his trusted mobile app to save the day. Freaky fast. At a Jimmy, <clears throat> at a Jimmy John's near you. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. 
Every day, the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. Welcome back to the show. Let's talk baseball now. Edwin Thompson's baseball Colonels lose against ranked teams, top 10 teams to open the season, then get your first home games over at Whitaker Bank Ballpark in Lexington and sweep Oakland. Good weekend for the Colonels. Yeah, it was great to, to, to kind of get back on that winning track, uh, playing some close games out in Arizona. Uh, had a tough one against Louisville, but we were able to come back and then win two close games on Friday and Saturday, one run-run games, and then be able to kind of uh, find a way to, to kind of get it done on Sunday, you know, to sweep them, which is very difficult to do at the Division One level. I know you told me you not really happy with your late inning defense uh, when you played the ranked teams, but better against Oakland? Uh, not where we want to be. You know, I think it's early in the year. I think you're going to have those moments where we're still kind of figuring things out and trying to get comfortable and getting reps and live and, and obviously in a game. But, um, you know, not, not where we want to be, but ultimately, you know, the end result for us this weekend was to be able to win three, uh, which is always a special thing to do, especially back at home. Right now, shortstop Rylan Kerr is your leading hitter at 400. What's he bringing to the table? Uh, you know, just the confidence. You know, he's a, he's a, he played a, a junior college as a redshirt sophomore and uh, transferred a new, new player for us and really just kind of given us a spark and um, comes up with big spots and really drive, leading our team in RBIs and just really finding a way to get the job done. When, you know, with two outs, a lot of times he comes up in those big spots. He's doing a great job for us. Left-hander Jack Picos uh, has 13 strikeouts, best ERA on your team, mm -hmm. transferred in from a junior college, uh, so getting some good innings from him. Yeah, it's been great. You know, he's a, a really competitor. You know, I think that's the thing that I love about him. He's, a, he's from New York, and he just does a great job coming at you, uh, really, you know, challenging, doesn't, doesn't walk many guys. I don't think he has any on the season so far, but just really has been um, a staple for us the last two starts on Friday, against, which is always the toughest on, on to do. Now the next weekend series is against Youngstown State. By the time people see this uh, broadcast, uh, you'll have already played Kentucky at UK and Lexington. Youngstown State up next for three games Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, uh, challenging team, new coaching staff, and um, very offensive. They're one of the better offensive teams we'll face up in this point. Uh, they just beat number 17 Georgia Tech um, this was a Sunday. So they're definitely capable of putting a lot of runs together. You know, hopefully we can uh, balance that out with some, some pitching and kind of offset what they do offensively. And then March 7th, Louisville comes back to Richmond for the return match. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, as a good opportunity for us and our fans to come out and see a top, top 10 team in the country and to us to hopefully respond in a better way than we did the first time around, but also play Western the day after that as well. So. All right. Well, I know you've been playing over at Whitaker Bank Ballpark. When you get into your new stadium, I know you'll be excited. Good luck to the Colonels. Uh, tough schedule to start, and uh, looks like you guys are getting it on track. Yeah. I mean, we're right now we're in the top 20 in the country, as top of schedule in the country. So, um, you know, our, our RPI is 45 in the country. That's been a good good thing for us. But just, you know, we want to play good teams to be good teams. So hopefully we continue to, to, to grow as the season goes along. All right. They are putting the finishing touches on the stadium. So keep an eye on EKUSports.com to see where this weekend's baseball games are and of course we'll see you out at the ballpark as well and when we come back we'll check in on the softball team at EKU. Ten seconds to go. Hyper coming forward. Moves in top of the key. Six seconds to go to three. ここにチタンウルトラボット五千がございます。Jimmy John's Freaky Fresh Delivery. Time now to talk softball with Jane Worthington, the head coach of the EKU softball team, winning three of its last four down at the Winthrop Invitational. What did you like out of your team? Well, I, just, I like the fact that we were able to get on the dirt. I think that's the biggest thing. A um, little bit more energy, effort, and attitude um, this weekend as opposed to last weekend. I think just a little experience helps. 
Uh, Rachel Minoj hitting 444, leading you. She's a sophomore first baseman. Right. Rachel's done a great job buying into our hitting philosophy. Last year, she was a good hitter, but she didn't have the power that she has this year. She's going to have, she's going to be good. You've used three different pitchers so far this year. Uh, is that what always happens early when you play these round robin uh, events early in the season, or uh, is it young and you're trying to develop who's going to be your main starter? Right. It's a little bit of both. Um, we have five pitchers on the staff. So I'm trying to give them some time and let them earn a spot. But then it's also that uh, your go-to, you don't want to wear them out before conference hits. Mm -hmm. what, what was the game that you say, this is what I want my team to be? Of all the wins, you, you had wins over Youngstown State, uh, North Carolina Central, and Mount St. Mary's. Was there one game that kind of said, this is what we want? It's interesting that you say that because um, it wasn't in our wins. It was probably in the loss against UIC last week. Mm -hmm. That's where I go back to. That's the one that we fought and fought and fought and had chances to win. If we'd have gone on a pass ball, we would have scored before it went into extra innings. That would have been the game. Mm -hmm. We know you do not start here at home until very late because the uh, stadium is being renovated, basically a new stadium over at Gertrude Hood Field. So back on the road for another round robin event uh, down in Statesboro, Georgia at the Eagle Classic. Right. We head to um, Georgia Southern uh, where we'll play five games down there in three days, Another, just like we did this last weekend. Um, all of these games are just giving us a chance to get on the dirt because right now we're not able to do that. Um, the more experience we get in, the better we'll be. It's just one of those years where we're going to have to learn while we're going. It's a work in progress. Yeah, and I talked with Edwin Thompson just the segment before here on Inside EKU Sports, and it always there's a, a theme about defense. Uh, defense, does it have to come around later in the season as the season goes on? Is, is hitting usually ahead uh, of the defensive effort? Um, probably just because you can hit anytime. Right. You can go indoor and hit in the cages. You can do that anytime. But there's a big difference between getting on your own field and the dirt and then having to practice on the turf or something else. The bounces are just a little yeah. bit different. You've got to get comfortable. And that's one of our problems is that we have a ground ball pitcher. Um, she's getting her ground balls, but then we're having trouble fielding them. All right, Jane, we'll field them all yep. down in uh, Statesboro, Georgia this weekend. Good luck. Thank you very much. All right, that's the EKU softball report for this week. And, of course, they'll be home in late March. They start against Kentucky, right, Coach? Correct. Kentucky, that should be a fun one to open the new stadium. When we come back, we'll put the baseballs and bats away and the softballs as well, and we'll get out the clubs and talk women's golf here on Inside EKU Sports. Welcome back to the show. The EKU women's golf team has won three of the last four OVC championships, hunting for another one this spring, and the season got underway last weekend down in Florida at the Sunshine Invitational. Mike Whitson, the head coach with us, and Mike, you finished fourth out of 12 teams, and as you were telling me, on a very hard golf course. Yeah, it was. It was a good week. Uh, we did some good things. We didn't play very well the second round, but uh, the first round and the third round, we saw some good things, and um, it was a good week to sort of an icebreaker, so to speak, and um, got a lot to work on getting ready for next week. Elsa Moberly led you, finished seventh overall individually in that mm -hmm. tournament. She's your shop, sophomore from uh, Somerset, very good golfer. Yes, she is. Uh, she's worked very hard this winter, as has the whole team, and um, she didn't have her best week down there. Finished seventh still, but didn't play well, and again, has some things to, uh, to work on getting ready for next week, but uh, she came to us from Mississippi State this year, so she's a sophomore for us, and uh, I really think she's going to have a great spring the rest of the time. Senior from Sweden, Sophie Levin finished 12th in that tournament. I know you've uh, banked on her to be one of the big contributors uh, throughout her career here at Easter. Yeah, Sophie's had a remarkable career. Um, one conference a couple years ago, all conference uh, every year, I do believe. And uh, 
uh, again, she's put in some good work over the winter, and I feel like she's going to uh, also have a good spring starting next week at North Florida's event. And the team will stay on the Atlantic side of Florida. This weekend, you go to uh, the North Florida Invitational down in Jackson, but a little further north in Florida. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the fourth straight year we've been to, to this event. We have host families there that our team stays with. Uh, we'll have the same families again for the fourth straight year, so we've developed a relationship with them. Uh, the golf course is, is wonderful, Jacksonville Country Club. Uh, it's a really good field this week, uh, full 15-team field. So uh, uh, we leave Saturday and practice around Sunday and tournament Monday and Tuesday. And I'm looking forward to it. It's been a long break. The team's looking forward to it. They're a little bit bored with practice, which is a good sign usually. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting back on the road with them Saturday. How's the, the crazy weather, which has been good crazy? Uh, it's been a warm uh, winter. How has it helped you prepare? And does it almost uh, make it different than a normal year? It really does. I told the team yesterday I've never had a team be this sharp on February 26th, which was yesterday, I guess. And uh, so it is, it is promising to be that sharp that early on in the year So we've, because we've had a good week of practice. At the same time, it is, a, it is a little bit different as far as the way I plan the spring and practice and practice times. And, and so I am trying to pace the team a little bit so we're rested and we're still energetic throughout the entire spring season. And the EKU Colonel Classic is March 31st, April 1st out at Arlington, correct? March 31st, April 1st at Arlington, yeah. Um, we host every year about the same time there, about the same weekend. We have uh, 11 visiting teams coming in uh, from uh, all the way from some Sun, uh, Sun Belt school, some Mac schools, a few OVC schools. It's going to be a great competition, so I uh, hope people come out and watch a little and bit. And then everything pointing towards the OVC tournament mid-April mm -hmm. down in Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, uh, April um, 17th, 18th, 19th, I think it is this year. And, uh, we'll be there. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be the same as it is every year. There's going to be several teams that have a good shot at it, and uh, it's no different than playing in a, uh, the OVC championship or a scramble out at Arlington. Whoever makes the putts has the best chance to win, and uh, I, I, I like our team, and, and we'll be ready to go at that time. All right, thanks. We'll be watching. Thanks, Thank Mike. Thank you. Mike Whitson, the women's golf coach at EKU, hunting for another OVC title. And we remind you to keep up with the Colonels all season long on EKUsports.com along with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Here at Inside EKU Sports, we love spring break like everybody else, so we will not be here the next two weeks. See you in three weeks. Inside EKU Sports. Brought to you by Jimmy John's. Order Jimmy John's sandwich delivery today. Jimmy John's Freaky Fast, Freaky Fresh.